much. Amen. Amen. Look, God is making everything new. Revelation 21 verse 5. Bible and the one sitting on the throne said look I'm making everything new and then he said to me write this down for what I tell you is trustworthy and true Amen Amen. Isaiah 42 9 Isaiah 42 9 Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things are declared. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. There are new things that are about to happen, and God is going to let you know ahead of time. Amen. Amen. The one the one sitting on the throne is God he is the one who has the highest throne and the one who sits on that throne is saying this look I'm making everything new things are being arranged you write these words too they are trustworthy they are true the one who speaks them is the right one and the one who speaks them is trustworthy we praise God that we have a real God a trustworthy God and he does great things for God to do all these new things there are requirements that you and I must do it's as if someone wants to change your house they go into your house and they see that you have old uh, chairs chairs that are not new uh-huh. yes there is a way you must say things and they find that your house doesn't have a new paint and he says I want to transform it and renew it it's not that he's despising what you have because they help you you sit on them you sleep in the house but they can give you newer things did you know that in this country there are people who change cars every month there are other people who change cars every two weeks did you know that they exist they go into a company and they tell them every two weeks I'm going to drive this car I'll be back to get a new car but there are others because of certain reasons they don't change cars your car is always new for 10 years it is new and it belongs to you but it's been there for 10 years it is new and you've had it for 13 years it is still new because you haven't changed it to you it is a new car because you are still driving it those people exist they agree or they have contracts with companies that the company will uh, 
provide a new car every two weeks. There are other people in the spirit who renew themselves every day. In the lamentations of uh, Jeremiah, the Bible says that your mercy renews every morning. Which means every morning you must enter into a new thing. There is a new blessing that you should receive. There is a new thing you should get. There is a new miracle you should enter. But it's not possible because there are things that have not been done. So your house to put new things in it I must, I must have your permission. Even though I was compassionate, I cannot just come and transform your house without your permission. You must accept me. It's possible that I think that one of the things you have is old, but you love it. Uh, you will see it when you go to offices sometimes you go to an office I'm talking about when I'm in Africa where I work there is a way that I arrange, I arrange things papers in one way other on the next on the, on different things I know these things in my mind. When I come back, I find that the secretary went in the office and they arranged them. And they put it on both sides and they give me a big space in the middle. When I enter, I I find out that it's chaos. And I say, who changed the arrangement? And the secretary will tell me it was chaotic and I tried to, to set it up to arrange it. And I asked the secretary, who told you it was chaotic? You actually are confusing me now. There is a letter that I had in the corner and I don't know where it is now. There is something else that I had to sign and I cannot find it. And the secretary tells me the table was disorganized and I tried to fix it. It's possible that the chaos you see is not chaos to someone else. So, so because there is to fix your chaos you have to ask permission because you are not the owner of those things sometimes it happens and you are confused and you lose the track your doctor cannot come to uh, treat you if you don't open the door for them your pastor cannot baptize you if you don't agree someone cannot preach to you if you reject them it's the same way in the spirit world even though God says I am going to make everything new when it comes to men he needs a permission God can change this building. He can change the ground. But the son of man, God needs your agreement. He needs your agreement. You must accept. So many of us don't have change because there are requirements that we don't fulfill. Among the many requirements that are there, 
we talk about only three things. There are priorities. The first one. It is a life of prayer. The second one. It is obeying the prophetic voice. The third one. It is to have righteous works. These three things. These they allow you to see a new thing every day in your life. Let me repeat. Prayer. Obeying the prophetic voice. And righteous works. Let's talk about. Sorry, sorry. Let's talk about prayer. Let's talk about prayer. Prayer will move God to do something new in your life. Prayer will move God to do it again. The reason why I say to do it again it is because there was a time that he did it. You went from one place. You went to a new place. You went from one life. You went to a new life. So he wants to do it again. There is something that is fashionable and something that is not fashionable. You have you may have a clothes that is very well. And you want to continue wearing it. But they tell you there is a new fashion. You have a computer. And they tell you there is a new fashion that came to, to It is not because the other one is not computer. But there is a new one. There is a, a, a new one. So there are things that God did in the past for us. But where he wants to take us. It requires new knowledge and a new thing. The school that you go to. It requires you to go from one place to another because you learn different things. So when we pray, prayer allows God to move again in our lives. People who pray, there are people who want God to do it again. Intercessors, there are people who want God to do it again. At their place, in their nation, in their lives, in their lifestyle, the prayers, there are people within there who do not want to stay in their lifestyle and who do not want others to remain in the same lifestyle. So in their prayer, there is a cry that says, do it again. 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 Those are cries of intercession. Those people who pray, there are people who want change in every aspect of life. The change in their work, the change in the youth, the change in the young children, the change in the church, the change in the system, the change in the nation, the change in the mindset. There are people who don't sleep because of others. People. They cry every day. They say, Do it again, God. Those are people who wait for revival. They wait for change. They, they wait for the time. In every moment. Psalm 1264. The Bible says, Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Bring back our captivity. Those who were taken as captives. Captives. 
bring us back. So that we can be like streams in the south. Streams in the south are what? In Hebrew, Negev is the south. That's what they call it. Negev is the south. Israel is divided in different parts. He has mountains which is called Golans. He has hills and valleys. It's called Shefela. That's where they are. And in the wilderness, it's called Negev. Or Negev. If you read the word Negev, they are talking about the south. Is where you see Beersheba. And you go to the wilderness of Negev. That's Negev. In the wilderness, there are no streams. But a long time ago, there were streams. When you get there, you find a way where water used to go. But there is no water. You see a way where the river used to flow. But there is no river. You find a place where there are uh, ways. Those ways they show how the rivers used to flow. So in the winter there is a rain that comes. It comes from the north. They come flowing. flowing. Let's say it's in April, May. April, May, June, July. And then in the south, when you go in the wilderness, you see water flowing. And you think, you think that it's rivers. But there are sources from the north. And they come running. And they use old ways that used to have rivers before. In those months of rain, the, the streams flow again in again. That's what the writer said. Bring us back. Bring us the old times. As the streams in the south. The ones didn't have water. But when the time of the rain comes. They have water flowing again. And it becomes a good place. A journey of going by. Sees water flowing and the thing is the some psalmist says bring us back again bring our captivity revive us again as the streams of the south the, the passionate translation I tried to follow the version called the passion translation it's TPT it says this can you read Joseph now. now, Lord, do it again. Re- Re- Restore us to our former glory. May streams of your refreshing flow over us until our dry hearts are drenched again. What does this word mean? God do it again. God bring back my old times of prayer that I used to have. Bring back the old times of joy that I used to have. Bring back the old times of singing that I used to have. Bring back the old times of fellowship with you that I used to have. Bring back the old times of peace that I used to have. Bring back the old times of love that I used to have. Bring back the old times of joy that I used to have. Those old times, 
Nyewe muka mutembe shamwa ambazi Ngogeru tembe shumutima wanje uma guritse Mubu iza buva kutembe yao As you cause water to flow in the, the naked desert Flow water in my heart again Where does this come from? It comes from knees from a crying man he said God remember me God set me free God set free my husband God set free my wife set free my child set free my child these are the streams of the game that they may flow in me set me free bring back my old time bring back my old peace bring back my old peace if we pray if we call upon God if we call it God, we refresh it. We create new things in our lives. He is a God who hears. He is a God who answers. And he is a God who works. If we call upon him, when we turn to him, when we call upon him, he does it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again, Do it again. Do it again Lord. Do it again, Lord. Do it again, Lord. Do it again, in the year of 1940 there was a professor called uh, Edwin in Orr of Eton Edwin Orr Edwin Orr of Witton he was a professor in uh, Witton University he called his students theology there was in, Chicago. in theology school in Chicago. And he told them, let's go to England to visit the historical sites of revival. Their stops were places where there used to be great revivals. One of their stops was the Epworth Rectory where reformer John Wesley had lived. I believe you have heard of John Wesley. John Wesley is the founder of the Methodist Church. Really, he's not the founder. The way he preached, because he was an Anglican, you know that England belonged to the Anglicans. They went from Catholicism. The Catholic people. They were ruling the Western world. That's why they were called Catholic because there were many. And then in the East, they continue with the Orthodox religion. That's Russia, Greece, Syria, Syria Iraq, Iran. The world was divided in two religions. The Western world became Catholic and the Eastern part became Orthodox. In Africa, there were two religions too. But the one that became strong was the Catholic. Because the colons came with the religion. They brought the religion of Catholic. But in Egypt, in Egypt, in Ethiopia. Catholic was not there. They continue to be orthodox. That means the Ethiopians, the Eritreans, the Egyptians, they are orthodox. They do not know the Catholic church like we do. And we are not called Catholic people. We are called the Roman Catholic. Are we together? Because the world was great and England was becoming great, they say, why are we going to Rome? We are a great nation. Let's start our own religion called Anglican. We will not continue to be attributed a Roman religion. We are Anglicans. 
but they continue to use Catholic rituals because that's what they knew. The difference between Anglican and Catholic the difference that was there but the biggest difference the Anglican priests would marry they have husbands and wives and they also don't have a pope they are pope or the, the rule of the is the queen or the king and then they will establish their representative who would be the chief of Canterbury in that time all the people in England were Anglicans this man John Wesley is because I'm going back to the history when I speak of John Wesley I want you to understand him and his brother Charles they were young students at the University of Oxford 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 University they were singers Many, many of the hymns that we have were composed by Wesley and Charles they brought a new way of preaching they will go outside others will preach inside the church and they will be dressed with robes they will do their ceremony they will read their books they will confess all those rituals but John Wesley when he will go out he would preach salvation. He would say, you are sinners. After prayer, you will hear what God says. And people were attracted to him. The way he speaks, the way he sings, the way he preaches. People got saved. In getting saved, after he died, people started calling him they said this man he has a method of preaching that is different from others that's why they call his church the Methodist church that's where you find the Methodist church he is preaching with a different method and they, they called him the founder of the Methodist movement but he John died Wesley as an Anglican John Wesley was an Anglican but the movement that came after established the Methodist church this church that we are in the house in, belongs to the Methodist who, be, who belongs to John Wesley it belongs to what does it mean? Do it again, God. The revival that happened. Long so, Professor Orr, the way where John Wesley lived, this man in the 1700s became the founder of the Methodist movement what characterized him he was a man of prayer in the book that I read they said that when he was 90 years old he would pray for 3 hours in the night from 3am to 6am in his old age he would still pray from 3am to 6, 6 a.m. This is a scary thing. These are people who prayed. These are people who prayed. Their lifestyle was prayed. We see results of things, but we don't know the source. It's because people prayed. I lived with my father in the same room until I was 12 years old. I left their, their room. Don't be surprised. I was the last one. They had no one behind me. The reason why we move some children out of the room is because we are expecting others. 
twe twaronze kugeza igihe wonke ibikatsi na na mashereka kiri if you have uh, ex- if you expect more children you win them quickly and you get them out of the room but we breastfed uh, for a long time muzukuri nta waruzi ubutesi gusa nibyo byarangaga abantu umuntu yagiye yigishwa nisi we were spoiled but we were taught by the world no no then muri yo myaka 12 in those 12 years nzi papa i know my father sakaken 3 am ari muri twibato he would pray in the morning kugeza mu gitoro until the nikihe batagiye muri twibato even when they don't go to the prayer no no amaze kurwara when he got sick nagiye mu rugo i went to see arakuza za mirongo 8 zigera he was old around 80 years old mbaza mama and i asked my mother then what the umbwizu kuri so tell me the truth papa racha senga kwa kundi does my dad pray the same way do you know what she told me she told me i can't even find him now he prays until the morning oh yeah asenga rya ari kugeza rya i asked her what time does he start and what time does he end arambira ngo icyonze and she told me what i know but sinzira rimo senga ngicura rimo senga ndavuga uri umunebwe mama wowe kudasenga i sleep when he's praying and i wake up when he's praying yamwe ati nibindi she told me it's amazing mumisi yanyu in his last days nano enongera kubaza cyo kibazo i asked him again that question does he still pray the same and she told me he doesn't speak he's kneeling praying and when i looked we young people you kneel for two hours and you feel pain and i asked him how does he do it and i understood this there are people that prayer became their life among prayers i told her to listen to his prayer and find out what he's praying for and she told me your father she, he prays in tongues until he, he he's done except one time when he prays abasengera basangwa butaka ngo bakizwe he's praying for the natives to be saved abasizwe inyuma namateka bo muita batwa bakunze kwita batwa the people called pygmies the people who were supposed to be called pygmies iyo avuga niba baririra anihira when he prays in his language those are the people he's praying for and i ask her we have many problems wealth problems why does he not pray for them she said maybe he prays for them but he prays in tongues today i am who i am maybe because not of me but because of the person who prayed your child can become a person because of your prayers your job can become something because of prayer when someone prays god does something new i call upon the church let's pray we did overnight friday we were few of us I do not think everybody was working at that but there are other people who feel like it's not necessary but for three hours those few hours before God it changes many things and your future among your children even your grandchildren sometimes you fight many battles and you, you see that it's serious but you do not know how you got out of it because of people who prayed yes praise god prayer works wesley 
This man was a prayer. He interceded for revival to sweep through England and into America. Dr. O. Bageze ahamuri mukongereza yabajanye munzu. Dr. O took them to a house in England. Abajana kugitanda Wesley yaryamaga. And he took them to Wesley's bed. Haragatapi aho. There was a small carpet. Basanga gatapi kuzuyeho umwanda karanduye ahantu habiri. They found that there was a two spots on that carpet. Abwira abanyeshuri be and he told his students this is where Wesley used to kneel they did not remove that carpet he has two worn places that show where Wesley used to kneel and the students were amazed and he told them that he prayed for many hours so that God can bring revival in the nation and as history tells us that's exactly what happened heaven broke in and revival broke out the sight of those two one spots had a profound effect on the students who stood in silence before they left to go to the bus the professor asked them to go into the bus and continue the journey once in the bus the professor realized that there was one missing he went back to the house to see if one is missing he stayed there and he found one student kneeling in the place where Wesley used to kneel fervently praying Professor Or Professor Or listened to his prayer. He was praying saying what? Do it again Lord. Do it again Lord. Would you do it again Lord? Would you do it again with me? Professor Or he kept quiet and then he touched the young man he said come others have left the young man stood up that young man was the great evangelist Billy Graham he was a very young man Billy Graham, Billy Graham. the prayers that he prayed God answered them he proclaimed the gospel to men and he proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom of God. Among the evangelists in our century, no one brought as many people to Christ as Billy Graham because of prayer. They asked him, they said, Billy Graham, what is your secret? and he told them it is prayer it is prayer and prayer and they were amazed they said you don't do anything else and he said yes there is one what is it prayer prayer and prayer they say okay tell us another thing do you have anything else you say yes there is another thing what is it? No go say. Prayer. No go say. Prayer. No go say. Prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we pray, God does great things. He changes our history. Our lives are changed. In this nation, there is a young man called David Brennett. You David Brent. This David Brent. He was a young man uh, in this country. He was born in April 
makumyabiri 20 20 years 1718 1718 this young man he died when he was 29 years old uyu this man the revival that you see what they call missionaries was started by the William Carries or the Martin. Pe- people who called Ma- Martin this one inspired them it's good to know the history of these people to know how they worked God brought new things in their lives this young man he was born in Connecticut the United States was, was not United States as you know it it was not uh, United. in 1718 the United States was not a nation but these people were coming from England and this one from Scotland they call them colonies. The British will bring people uh, into this nation, this country of Native Americans, and they will call them colonies. This is he was born in a big family. But he had a tragedy. His father died when he was still nine years old. And his mother died when he was 13 years old. And he was brought up by his sister. And I believe he's in New Jersey. And he had pneumonia because of the cold uh, and the issues that were there. One day, he committed to go to Yale University. Yale University Yale University was very great. It was still at the beginning. And his students were filled with the Holy Spirit. But the administration of the school they were saying do not teach uh, the things of God, just teach science. And the professors who call the students fanatics and the students who call professors pagans it wasn't easy this young man Brent and they put a rule in the university that anybody who calls a professor a pagan will be, uh, will be removed from the university. This man was already saying that there was someone who came to preach to them and told them that they are native Indians who don't know God. And he asked them, can you commit to become missionaries in this country? And his heart connected to preach the natives. They were in class one day and they talked to his friend and he said, this professor is a pagan he has no grace and the professor heard it they called him and they asked him to apologize and he said I'm not going to apologize because he's a pagan so they uh, removed him from the university They they took him out 
and he was grieved agira ka depression he had a depression kuko yarazi ko agiye kwiga cyane because he thought he was going to be educated ariko imana iza kubikoresha but god used this wa muhamagaro kuje kubwiriza abasangwa butaka urongera urabyuka muri we the calling to preach to the natives awakened in him again icyo yakoze nike what he did is this yitegura kuje kubabwiriza he prepared to go and preach to them afati hemarye he took his tent agendiyo bari bari iyo mu mashamba kuko babaga mu mashamba and he went to the forest where they used to live now kwa genda as he went abasangwa butaka bari inyuma ye kugira ngo bamwice kuko cyo giye barabicaga haba intamba rikomeye abazungu bageze muri igihugu bwa mbere n'abasangwa butaka bari cyanye cyane the natives were behind him trying to kill him because at that time there was a war between the natives and the people who were coming in this country no no aragenda ageze iruhande gwe wishamba ashira ku hema rye ategereje ejo kwazaja kubareba kabakwiriza he got near forest and he put his tent waiting for the next morning to go and preach to them aragenda he went barya basore bagiye bamukurikira basangwa butaka baja kubwira chef wabo the natives who went after him they went to tell his chief their chief there is a foreigner who came known so to begin what to, do we do chef arababwirango the chief told them afata basore he took the young man he took nimyambi arrows and uh, bows ati mugende mu mwice he told them go and kill him baraje kwihemarye they came to his tent buri ibiti they uh, climbed the trees ba forimeheto they stretch their bows na soka mwihem when he comes out of the tent ba murunde hiyo miambi yose they are going to attack him with the arrows biriwe kugiti they spend the day on the tree tia soka he never came out fakati wa munyamahanga bite they say what's wrong with this man let's come closer to the tent when they came closer basangara fukamye ko rase they found him kneeling and praying yari mu avugiki what was he saying oh man god ukunda wa basangwa butaka you love these natives warabapfiri you died for them nabana bawe they are your children mbasabi yibyiza i asked that for, i asked for good things baratanga and they were shocked tuzikore matu atubwira ibyi atusengera ibyiza ngo ni 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 bayita ngo ni strange being ngo ari maravugana ngo ngo ni kintu kitaboneka n'umuntu utaboneka and they told him they talk to each other they say he speak to speaking to a strange being but he can't uwo muntu utaboneka and that strange being baramubwira amagambo meza kuri twebwe he is telling him good words about us ariko nacho twahawe itegeko cyo kumwicereka turi but it's okay we are going to kill him because we were told so mukanya in a short time ubwo barimo baramurunguruka they are looking at him. the other one is praying they came a big serpent they know the serpent it came in the tent and they say let's watch the snake came close to the head of david brent when he got near him he raised his head so that he could bite him all of them were watching as he, he lifted his head as he was about to bite him he brought the head back he turned around and he left david david was still praying still praying they say you know what the strange being he's talking to is stronger than that snake so they ran they went to tell the chief they said the man we saw is scary he spoke for hours with a strange being and he was talking about good things they talked about the snake even the snake was scared the strange being he was talking to 
protected him from the chef and the tribe chief said let's go and see him they all went they all went from the forest and they found David they said come to our place they received him they fed him and they said that day he preached the gospel and 300 people were saying yes Jesus we will do it again your prayer will save you from the snake God will do it again he will save you from the snakes of his time the snakes of his time Satan the enemy Satan who wants to eat your child who wants to eat your child who wants to eat your business do it again do it again are you ready that he would do it again for you. you. The Bible says, James 5, 17, 218. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would now rain, and it did not rain on the land for the And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain and the earth produces food. Prayer. We bring back the rain. God will do new things again. Do you need rain in your house? Do you need rain in your house? In your household? In your nation? Say prayer. Prayer is difficult. But it allows God to do new things. If you can, new things will happen. New things will happen. Say new things will happen. Amen. Amen. Where we went to school, it was a forest. We used to study agriculture in a very bad forest. We lived with a Congolese tribe called the Manga. And they live in the equatorial forest. These people, they would eat people. When someone would die, they would not bury them at the tomb. They buried them in the doorway of the house. When you go to enter into a house of the Mumanga, you find five tombs of people who died. Why did they bury their people in the door? It's because if they bury them away, in the evening, people go and uh, unbury those people and eat them. That's what happened. We got there as young men who were on fire. We would pray for 24 hours. And one of us would pray for six hours, six hours, and another one six hours. And we were four or three of us. We would pray for revival in that place. And God did amazing things. Bengamisa was full of revival. What is the first thing? God told me to go to a Baptist church. Their pastor was bedridden. I went to the house. When I got there, I found that the pastor was sick. He was an old man. And he had a small church there. But a church that had that was so cold in the spirit. And I talked to him about Jesus. Pastor. He was a pastor. About, he was a, almost 30 years old. 30 years in, the, in salvation. And that evening, when I spoke to him, he told me, I want to be saved. And I was shocked. And I thought I did not hear what. What do you want 
that I want to be saved. I remember Jesus speaking to Nicodemus how are you a teacher of the law and you don't understand what I'm saying and I remember that the Nicodemus exists and I told him among the things that you get saved you have to do this I would, he told me I will give you all the uh, witchcraft tallies that I have to protect myself I say, Pastor, what about the name of Jesus? He said, do not speak of that. You can die here. He went to his house. His he brought thieves of a lion. He brought skin of a tiger. Many small things. He said, I wear this in the morning. I wear this in the evening. When I speak, when I preach, I if you are not, if you don't wear this as you preach, you are going to get hit. He was a pastor. Imagine the pastor who has a tally so that the sorcerers will not attack him. And he said, if a sorcerer comes who is more powerful, what happens? He said, you get hit. And he told me the things that you told me, because I have touched that power. I know that Jesus is powerful. In other words, he brought those things. Once we burned them, the pastor was bedridden. His back was broken. He was he would uh, crawl. The amazing thing that I saw his back was straightened and he told me these things are real I told him no Jesus is real on Sunday he told me to go and preach at this, at, at this church and I saw a revival that I have never seen and I told him to send me his worship team so that I can teach them a song I will never forget a young man he sent me called Kombosi he was a young man who was older than me he was very zealous Kombosi came he found me in my room I taught him the song we sang it and I said should I come and worship team he said you will find us ready on Sunday so he told me the news he said, in that church, on Sunday when you come, you must come full of power. Because you are Kivu children, you don't know what happens again. And I found that the Kombozi <laughs> was the pastor. He was the worship team leader. He said, what am I going to do with this one? He said, Kombozi, I did not tell tell Kombozi about the testimony of the pastor but Kombozi loved me and he gave me a counsel he said you must come ready when you go to that place I see you the children of Kiv you don't know this but here someone can look at you and you fall down I say, Kombozi, what do I do? He said, go and ask the people around here. They know what to do. I say, okay. I'm going to look for you. But you can uh, give me reference. He, he told me, all the neighbors here know it. Just go to one of them. Brethren. On Sunday, I went and I found Kombozi singing. I found him singing and jumping. And I asked ask myself, what kind of man is this? He was wearing all his witchcraft talents. And the pastor came up. He had to introduce me. And the pastor talked about his the miracles. 
They thought that he was sick. Bari bari they knew he was sick. And that he was healed. He spoke of the miracles. And he said, the things that I had, and thought it was a secret. And I, I realized that everybody else knew it. And I asked myself, what kind of Christianity is this? He said, I threw them away, you must throw them away too. When he allowed me to preach, I felt anger in the spirit. And I said, these are Christians who are pagans. A Christian who is doing pagan rituals. I prayed and all the church came to receive salvation. This is what's funny. The pastor came and stood in front again. That time, revival broke out in Bengamese. I saw people who were bringing dead people. When they would bring them in the room, it wasn't me. My friends, they would pray for them and they would raise them and news broke out but it was the year that I was supposed to leave I was asking myself if I should not go back but I didn't know how to go because it was in the forest what is that? it is prayer when we pray God will do it again when we pray God will do it again Elijah was a man and he prayed and God did miracles God opened doors praise Jesus praise Jesus he told Ahab gird your loins and go because the rain is coming they were in a drought of three years and six months and God did miracles are we ready to pray so he can do it again he prayed he put his head between his knees and he called he sent for him to go and look on the seventh time he told him I see a, a cloud like a, a hand of a man. I want that, hand, that crowd to come to your life again. Like everything that bound you, leave you. Anything that made, made your life difficult, go. That is the time we are in. Number two, for God to work again, it is to obey the prophetic voice. May that voice come to you again. The psalmist said, The voice of the bird is heard again in our nation. The, verse, the, the voice of the dove is heard again in our nation. I pray that the prophetic voice can be heard again in your heart. May this prophetic voice come again. And may God show you what you must do. There are some things that clogged your eyes and you are not doing anything that God wants. May the prophetic voice speak again to you. And God will do something new in your life. You who are following me online, may the voice of God speak to you again. You are listening to me on the radio, may the prophetic voice speak again to you. When you are following me on different platforms, may the prophetic voice speak again to you in your life. Isaiah 43. The voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord make straight in the desert and a highway for our God. When you hear the voice of God there is something new that will happen on verse 4. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill brought low, the crooked place shall be made straight, and the rough place is smooth. 
ngo icyo bero cy'uwiteka kizahishurwa ngo kandi abantu bose bazakibonera rimwe ngo kukakanwa ku uwiteka ariko kabivuze the glory of the lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the lord has spoken turi mu bihe bene da we are in times better the world is in trouble people are in trouble sins are many the fear of God has left the world is in confusion this is the time when the prophet it sounds like it's in the wilderness where people don't want to hear where people don't want to see God speaking again where people don't want to be rebuked they don't want to be rebuked they don't want to be told I want to tell you there is a prophetic voice whether they write or not it is coming in Mark 3 it but truly I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord and of justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression and Israel his sin this voice works in men full of the spirit of God women who have justice who have might in God given by the spirit of God to declare to the people of this time the ways to the glory of God wants to be revealed prepare the way of God so that he can do new things I believe that God will do it again obey the voice of God obey the word of God put in practice the word of God the valley shall be made the mountain will be low, and the miracles will happen the presence of God will be revealed that is the voice of the one crying in the wilderness he speaks in a place where people don't want to hear but it's there those who hear it God will do something new in their lives number three requirement it is righteous work the time is coming to replace unrighteousness with righteousness to replace lies with truth to replace lies with truth to replace hypocrisy with truth to fear God and to cause him other people to fear him. our works may speak of God our thoughts think about God our works show God it doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean anything. To do unrighteous works and spend eternity in pain. You can do righteous works and spend eternity in good things. It is it doesn't mean anything to be fed and to spend your life your eternal life in judgment it doesn't mean anything to look good outside but to spend eternity in the fire may our works righteous works be manifested seek the kingdom of God seek righteousness all, all the other things that we are running after we follow us. seek God seek the face of God seek the glory of God seek the honor of God seek righteousness and God will do it again God will do it again those who did righteousness he did something for them the bible says in proverbs 14 34 righteousness exalts a nation righteousness 
people who are righteous will cause God to exalt their nation. The battles that people meet, the battles that they fight, is not because of others, it's because of unrighteousness. Ukianuka. Righteousness exalts a nation. Ukianuka. Righteousness exalts families. Ukianuka. Righteousness exalted a family. A family that is unrighteous is always in war. A nation that is in righteousness is always in war. A people in righteousness is always in war. But those who are righteous, God will exalt them. Because he does new things every day. The Bible says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Yeah. Yes. Sin is a reproach to any people. Anybody wants to be the father of a righteous son. They don't want to be a, a father of a difficult child. Isn't that so? When your child is well behaved, you want them to be yours. We were doing some, a word the other day with our Hebrew professor it's in Proverbs we were analyzing it in Hebrew it says a wise son a wise son pleases his father do you hear this but a foolish son is a affliction it's a grief to his mother to his father the child is good but to his mother it's a fiction we were doing a contrast uh, comparing two things a, f- a wise son pleases his father but if they are foolish they cause grief to their mother why? because no father will take ownership of a foolish son they always call them their mother's son they always tell their mother but if they are wise they say my son is coming the discussion we are having there's a contradiction in the we found out that in the Hebrew uh, uh, translation it really didn't mean the same yes it does say that but the root the root they met even though both of them are grieved the mother will be grieved even more but the father dies within and they don't want to associate themselves with their child. And what those children know because they come always near their mother. They always want to be near their mother. Everybody knows who to go to. Zion Temple Kigali, we have a, a, crazy, a mentally disabled person. Sometimes she insults everybody and everybody rejects her but when I come she runs to me because she knows that I receive her she tells me about the fiance 
that she would have a no, wedding with a no. and she wants a contribution and then we sit down and uh, create save the day cards <laughs> and she tells me how the white, white man <laughs> is wealthy <laughs> and that he's going to come in a <laughs> private jet <laughs> and then we plan how to <laughs> ask for <laughs> a parking for the plane in Kamunombe anybody has their lover and their lover is the one who hears them. The person who hears you, you spend time with, but the other one you reject. Uh, Proverbs 11, 10 to 11. When he goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices. Just the joy of the righteous will cause the whole village to rejoice. The city will rejoice when the righteous is joyful. Do not grieve a righteous person among you. God told Abraham, I'm going to destroy Sodom. If you find unrighteous people, I will not do anything. They went down to ten. And God said, If there was one righteous in Sodom, Sodom Sodom will still be in existence. But because there was no righteous man, the works of righteousness cause other people to be well. On 11, on 11, by the blessing of the upright the city is exalted but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked I will never forget the battle that we had it was caused by one wicked person among us at the campus in Bengamisa uh, when we lived among the Mangas a young, a young man went from the university to the city he went inside and he seduced a girl with money and they went in the house and committed sin when the father came in the room he found them doing things that are not appropriate you know those, you know those things don't exist in Africa maybe here if children are not well raised they can do it but not in Africa here you see two young people going in their room and you just ignore them but it's not the same in Africa that man told the young boy the the young man leave my house and the young man refused they fought after they fought um, the manga brought the other mangas. When the young man saw that many of them were coming, he ran. When he got far, he screamed. Oh, camarade. He said, Camarade, students, help me come to my rescue. And a thousands of students, we came all together. We went to see. That day we started fighting. The mangas and the students. There was a big fight. Because they had bows and they had uh, spears. All the students fled. And there was one man left. He passed away. 
uwo musore niwe wasigaye he stayed behind omurikivu asigara arwana akinga ingona he was one who was who stayed behind to fight yari umuvandimwe twari twaravanyiyo muri za kivu he was a brother from kivu baramuzenguruka bose and the surrounding him, he would they would throw spears and he would block them the manga said this man has witchcraft and they left him. but the students burned the houses of the villages the five stars. the army came to rescue and to stop the fight. the commandos because it was serious okay and then afterwards we asked around what happened and we found that it was just one wicked man who caused all that trouble don't get involved before you find out who is the root cause we went and asked for forgiveness we prayed so that God may forgive us one wicked man was going to destroy the entire school the blessing of the upright the city is exalted but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked before you get involved in any case and defend them ask them first listen tell me the full truth it is me and you I must defend you on the right basis sometimes you defend someone and you find out that they are in the wrong you must know first before you defend anybody God will do great things for you but show righteous acts in these times in your words in your works in your thoughts and he will do it Psalm 28 12 when the righteous rejoice there is great glory but when the wicked arise men hide themselves do you know why the countries in Africa are different from the western countries because many of the leaders in Africa this doesn't require salvation it requires righteous works and you are just you put people in jobs based on their capabilities you promote people based on a seniority but in Africa many works are not done in righteousness that's why we have problems but in these countries it is not Christians who lead us but they cannot be unjust even in your court even the judge the first intention of the judge when you are, have a case against the government in them they want to defend you but they want to see the act of righteousness if you can have one thing he can base himself on he can uh, justify you this country there are countries that have a DNA of righteousness you go and you take you get gas that was, that was the case a long ago. and then you pay in the inside the, in the, inside the shop and then you 
kera kera iki gihugu waragenda gukanywa gaze warangiza ukagenda ngiyewe naje muri iki gihugu ariko bimeze ukaja kwishura hariya imodo kwiparitse yuzuye gaze kandi nta makamera yahabaga ukagenda ukishura kamubwira ati nanyoye aya ngaye oh ukamwishura ukagenda kibari babizi bibintu by'ubutindi byaje aho bigisigaye umuco ni hehe ni muri restaurant bari bakwishuza utararya ariko muri Afrika ubanza kwishura kabona kurya kuko cyo bakurya ukanyerera mu muryango kiruka a long time ago people used to have they would get gas first and then pay afterwards but things changed because of many immigrants that brought other cultures now the only place where they don't make you pay ahead of time is the restaurant amaduka yamubona the shops that you see je nagandiriye nabantu mu bibi i talk to people in belgium afite nka makota tan someone who has like five a good suits come on and i say where did you buy these suits one of them told me it was a long time ago ngo waburi igicucu ngo ntawagura hano ngo uragenda ukipima wajyanye irindi rya ukaryambarira ho hejuru warangiza ugasohoka ngo eje ukongera ngo wakuramo nka tano yawe they told me that's it's foolish to buy suits you just go and put on suits inside the shop and you walk out because they don't know that you have a suit in muri africa we pime mwenda in africa do you try yeah, we pime wate ngo nu wa wa deja wa ufungwe when you try it they tell you it belongs to you you must pay ariko ino mu maduka haba hantu bipimira ni mwabonye but in iyo tawukunze usubira wabonye ni bakaja gutoragura muri africa wa ukura muri bya bintu kambara bakawukwemera kusubirana kuba na tibishoboka kubera iki kudakirano in africa they cannot trust you to try clothes on because of unrighteousness that young man from congo he told me he said because so in belgium they started investigating and they found out that it was immigrants who were stealing clothes and they started putting in place uh, alarms and those alarms came afterwards because of immigrants like us this is not right. these people did not know how to speak and i will show i'll prove it to you you take your clothes after one week and you say i don't like it they pay they pay you back but africans they go, they go to their wedding on saturday and afterwards ubukwe bwaragiye yambaye costume nziza bamubonye ko yari yambaye neza nabo no umwenda yagiye yarafata yarangiza mu ngara amafaranga yanje sina ukunze yarangije kirori ibirori byarangiye tabandi babikora banyiri iki gihugu aba tibashobora kubikora kuko bavukiye muri systeme zikiranutse ibi bikora abandi africans put on the buy clothes and they return them on a monday because uh, they want their money back people from these countries do not do that because they were born in righteous systems another one told me no 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 africa is an african arambira ngo ntahi birori aho byabaye hose biro gatano kandi nambara umwenda mushi ubukura ngo mu maduka ufite ifaranga na warambira ngo igicucu nicyo cyagura imyenda Again, the gate was a cagaruza, 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 a gukiranuka gushira umuryango hejuru gukiranuka guhesha imana uburenganzira bwo gukora ikintu kizima mu rugo rwa those people who always uh, uh, put back clothes after they wear them 
those are signs of unrighteousness. These people cannot be leaders. That's why we have problems in Africa. Righteousness will exalt a nation. It will exalt your family and it will exalt you. Here you go. 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 James 5.16 The f- effective and fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. There are two people, two things. There is a gift and there is righteousness. When you have a gift to heal the sick, it can work whether you are righteous or not. When you have a gift of prophecy, it can work whether you are righteous or not. It's a gift. But righteousness is above all gifts. You can pray and ask. God can show you the future. You can pray and miracles can happen. The effective prayer of a righteous man it avails much. It gives you gifts that you didn't it have. It takes you to a new level. It makes you do miracles. And you don't have those gifts. But because they behave right before God, before men, and in their mind, let's be righteous. And let God do new things. If you do so, I will make everything new and write it write it down those words are true and trustworthy may god bless you amen amen i'm going to pray for these three things may god give you a spirit of prayer to hear and obey the voice and to obey his word and to give you righteousness stand up and let's pray Be praised, Jesus. We give you all the glory. We worship you, Your We give you. We give you all the. Glory, we worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We take a man in command of the Lord, great God, I thank you. Urahamba, you are great, and you do good. Imbaragazao, may your power, may your grace, Utumanukire. Come to us. I ask for the power of prayer to come to your people so that you can do new things. I ask God that you give us to hear the prophetic to obey so that you can do new things. Speak. And we speak. We obey. Use your word to bring new things in our lives give us righteousness in our work in our work in our works until we get to a new level I thank you Father I thank you Father you don't change you are still the same you are still the same we praise you Jesus let the honor be yours and then forever I pray for a blessing on your church may they start seeing you may they start seeing amazing things May they see a new life in their lives. Use them. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.